All right, it is week six. It's the last of our content-based videos. We're talking about equilibrium. So let's see what there is to say. Okay, so now I said we talked about altruism before, but we're going to break it up into four uh, parts this time. All right, so we're, we're going to start off with nepotistic altruism, which is really the altruism that you can see between parents, children, uh, close kin. <clears throat> I mean, there are some people who say, ah, people can't be, be, be altruistic. I mean, that, that doesn't really exist. There's always some kind of, what? I mean, they're always in it for them. They, they, there's something for them. Well, you want to know something? I guess maybe you can look at it that way. That's what, there's always a perspective that could be had. The, I, I put it this way. I'm glad my mother was an altruist. That I, that I am. I'm thinking most humans with mothers are glad that they are altruists to some point of view, to some degree, because they care and will do and will, for all, in many instances, they will simply die for their children. Um, that is a, a, an altruism. So they're doing that. They do the things that they do. They help their children. They take care of their children. They do that sort of thing there. Um, and many times at their expense, right? I know my mom did. No, I'm thinking everybody, everybody with a mom experienced that. I mean, that, that that's that's kind of what, yeah, that's kind of what they do. That's why we have Mother's Day. <laughs> so we can thank them for doing and giving us life. So, <laughs> that's cool. Um, uh, we also have group-based altruism. And if you remember, we talked about communities of practice a while ago. Remember that? Right? I mean, I have my people. I'm doing my things. We were talking about that in the context of bias. But here, I'm talking about the, the uh, communities of practice in terms of altruism. Because, you know, they are there. I mean, I am in my group I will do for the people in my group, all right? So I remember once we were, we, we were Marines and we went out to, um, where was this? Spokane, Washington, I think that's what it was called. Uh, we were out there and there was an army, an army base out there. We were playing rugby. So it was the Marines. We think we're, we're big and bad. We were playing against these cats to do rugby. They were playing rugby every day. <laughs> they... <laughs> They stomped us. <laughs> I mean, it was, it was brutal. I think there might have been a tank detachment on top of that. I mean, all they do is lift up heavy stuff. So we went out there doing our stuff. Uh, yeah, I mean, I helped. I was, I, I, I was a Marine, right? I wasn't with the Army guys. Uh, so they were my team. I'm going to help out my team. I'm going to do the things for them. When I, if I needed to go get, uh, I don't know, somebody needs uh, uh, medical gear, I go get it if it's the Marine. Uh, you guys, you Army guys, you got your own stuff. You, <laughs> you got your own people. <laughs> Have your people help you. I'm helping mine. You understand? Because that was my community of practice. That's where I practice my particular altruism in that particular place. Uh, reciprocal, all right? This is where people started, you can hear people talk about altruism and it not necessarily be um, uh, it's like, a, like, like a humanistic thing or, or you know, just from the goodness of your, your, your heart. Reciprocal altruism is something where I could do something for you and there's, there perhaps is some type of benefit that I might get in the, in the future or there that might be experienced. It might not necessarily be me who has to receive this, but... You know, I'll do this now because I know that something can be done later. I'll help you today so that perhaps maybe you can help someone else tomorrow. Well, that's what the reciprocal altruism is talking about. And then moralistic, right? Um, when you're talking about moralistic, you're really looking at, I mean, you've heard it, the golden rule, do unto others as, have, as, as you would have them do unto you. All right, what 
some people say that's more of a reciprocal uh, arrangement. Uh, so the golden rule as we've kind of heard it, I mean, the most common form of that was just as I said, do unto others is having to do unto you, so on and so forth. But that one even sounds like, yeah, do unto others as you would have. That It was that part that seemed that, you know, I, if I, but if you don't do unto me, like I did unto you, then I won't do it at all. Uh, so there are other people, there are other trained patterns of thought that would say, you know, the golden rule is really all about just simply do unto others. I mean, you can leave off the, left, the, right, the rest of it. It's just charity for charity's sake. That's what that is, okay? So the moralistic altruism is something in that space. I'm not, I'm not advocating any particular rule or, or, or construct or any particular form, but it really has to do with charity for charity's sake. That's what we're actually talking about <clears throat> with the moralistic altruism, okay? And now that you actually have those things, so we talked about, or we talked about uh, liberty, and we're looking at justice, and then we talked about altruism. Now we have to wrap all this stuff up. I mean, how does equilibrium play into all of this? I mean, where does it actually fit? Okay, so when you're talking about equilibrium, your tip, you're basically, in, in many contexts, you're actually talking about uh, almost like an equalization of, of competing forces. So in this area, we're not really competing forces, but they're distinct. So we're talking about justice and liberty, altruism. We all have these ideas that form who we are. Um, I might care about justice a great deal. I mean, personally, I do. I, things have to be fair. I mean, if someone, if someone could point out a, 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 one of my Achilles heel, uh, where I could be, I don't know, some a weakness of mine, it would be that I am fair to a fault so that I could be, you know, I would push for fairness at all costs. And maybe sometimes that's not the route you go. Maybe there is another way uh, of looking at it. Um, I also believe in liberty, okay? And so liberty, and from my point of view, I, I like freedom. I like being able to choose to judge for myself, right? I do. I take my own stand. That's kind of why the book is named what it is. That's why Jiffy Tiles came about, because I do believe in liberty. Um, but, right, uh, as I define it, I'm an altruist. I will simply do, I will put my neck on a chopping block in order to, to help someone else, uh, in order to what? Uh, to enforce and make greater opportunities for justice. I would use altruism in that, for, for that purpose alone. And I would, be, I would want the freedom to be able to do so. So all three of those things uh, affect me. I mean, they're, they're core to what I am. They're core to, like, many people. I mean, a lot of people can decompose some of their actions and their beliefs and how they go about their lives looking at these particular concepts, right? How does that play out? Uh, does, does justice resonate with one person more than, let's say, altru altruistic endeavors? Uh, does liberty push them beyond uh, either one of those? Uh, I mean, you can take, you can take, take an example. I mean, I could, I could be at a playground as a parent watching kids, okay? I mean, I see everybody's wandering around. I have my daughter. She's playing. Um, they could be, there could be a slide, okay? Just a slide. Kids walk up, you can slide down. Walk up, slide down. Walk up, slide down. What happens if there's a kid, right, who just keeps walking up and sliding down and not letting anybody else go? Uh, I mean, where, 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 where's the fairness of that? Like a bully. What happens if another kid chooses to push that boy out, or boy or girl, out of the way? Get out of the way! It's my turn to go now. Uh, is that bullying? What if you know, the person pushes them back? So, what if conflict begins to emerge out of this particular instance? What, as a parent, would you, what, what would you advise? I mean, so, I mean, you could see this this slide hog. <laughs> keeping everybody else from doing it in, in a bullying kind of way, um, maybe they're, 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 the justice inside of you resonates more. You must be fair, kid. You just, can't do, you just can't do that. But then, on the opposite side, 
kid, he's free to do it. Nobody else is saying anything. Uh, if, no, if nobody else is going to stop me from doing it, I'm going to continue to do. I mean, I, I see a whole lot of negative liberty here. <laughs> no obstacles. So uh, what happens if the, the, the people that are being uh, pushed to the side, uh, not able to slide up and slide down, what if they're your neighbors? And these are kids from another neighborhood just coming in bogarting their way, doing whatever they wanted to do. I mean, does that affect you more that now that there's some type of um, group-based altruism uh, that you feel uh, I should be sticking up for the kids who are here who actually own this, 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 this park. They, we live in this neighborhood. We own this park. And we have people coming in here that not even going to let us use our own stuff. So how do you choose? How do you allow those forces to control the actions that you might take in those kind of situations? I mean, it's easy once you, it's easy to understand where some of the conflict could come in. Okay, that's what I'm actually talking about. Once you understand what those things are, if you can decompose it in that, in that way, well, and then if you were able to explain it, well, then it, makes, it can make sense to understand why somebody else might act the way that they do. Okay, I mean, because um, if they have the equilibrium of what they are, I mean, I might be heavily altruistic, um, a, little bit, uh, uh, a little bit on the liberty side, but um, a, a bit more on the justice, right? So if that's where I typically center myself, right, then you could start to see how I could react inside of certain situations uh, if I were to start to decompose the various pieces, right? I mean, I could, yeah, uh, uh, VG is going to react a certain kind of way because that's what he believes. I mean, that's how he rolls. That's how, it, that's how he does things. So yeah, that's, that, that, that's well to be expected from him, right? That's what that's all about. Now, does that mean that it's static? No, uh, we're human. Everything is all about change. Change happens. That's the only thing that... That's the only constant, truly, is that change does occur. So the equilibrium can change as well. It's almost like uh, the ultimate form of per, uh, a perspective. I mean, it's another, at the very least, it's another form of perspective. Um, and it changes. It could change with time. It could change in place, environment. It could change in context or, or, or action. Um, even the same person, I, my equilibrium could be set uh, one way at home, but different when I go to work. Okay, so the actions that I might do there might not fit actions that I do at home, simply because my equilibrium shifts once I actually leave one environment and move to the other. That is, I mean, because think about it. I mean, I, I, I at work, I mean, they're just people I work with. That's all. That, that's all. That, that, that's all they are. But once I make it home, these are people I die for. They're completely different. Completely different. Hence, there's a bit more altruistic waiting in my home than there would ever, ever be on the job. Okay? So that's what I meant when I said it could shift depending on, depending on context, depending on where you're at. All right? We really start to explore that once we actually look at what the algorithm is, how it actually works. Um, there's a profile which kind of defines how you are. I mean, you, it goes through like a survey. And from that survey, you, derive, you can derive your equilibrium. Um, and then depending on scenarios with uh, another survey, you could start to see how your equilibrium af uh, affects, right? Um, actions that you might see or take in various scenarios. And that's what we're actually going to be looking at when we start talking about our algorithms next week. And that's going to do it for what we're talking about this week uh, with regards to our equilibrium. As I said, it was going to be relatively short. Uh, I thank you again for joining me here. There is an assignment for you to do towards the... Uh, uh, there is an assignment for you to do online, so knock that out. Uh, and we will get back to it again next week. 
Uh, for all intents and purposes, this is one of the last meetings that we have where it's pure uh, a video where I'm standing in front of you. Uh, most of the, the last two videos that we actually have, sure, there, there's a small section or segment of it where I'm actually before you, but for all intents and purposes, that is, um, there, there, there's, there, there's system work. Uh, you're using the algorithms, we're walking through how it works, what it does, the various components, and so on and so forth. All right? Uh, and that will be it. So, again, I thank you. Be safe out there. And as always, Jiffy Tiles.